Hello everybody and welcome to this iPad music production course uh, as part of Wheelworks Make Do Create Festival. My name is Graham Ginty and I am an electronic music producer and have been for about the past 25 years. Uh, I have uh, released music on uh, record labels around the world in the UK, America, uh, Italy, Spain, France, lots of places, um, primarily making uh, electronic music, house music, um, it's kind of down tempo, ambient stuff, uh, breakbeat. Uh, but I'm also a DJ and I run my own club nights and uh, DJed all over the place, uh, playing kind of breaks and uh, house music, techno, lots of electronic stuff. Uh, so over the course of these next six videos, I'm going to show you how to use the iPad and lots of different apps um, to turn your iPad or iPhone uh, into a portable music studio. Uh, so we'll have a look at different apps for making sounds, we'll have a look at an app that we're going to uh, stick all those sounds together and turn them into a final piece and then also have a look at how we upload that online uh, and get that out into the world. Um, so these days you don't necessarily need a big uh, uh, all bells and whistles music studio to record amazing music um, with some fairly uh, inexpensive equipment um, like some free apps and a couple of little uh, uh, microphones that you could maybe plug into your iPad and some real simple things so you can use your iPad as uh, a really high-end studio and uh, create lots of really professional sounding great music um, using lots of different apps that are out there. Uh, so in this first one, we're going to have a look at one of the apps that we're going to use. But first thing that we're going to do is to show you a little bit about file management uh, within the iOS operating system. Just so that whenever you're creating sounds, you're making beats, you're uh, creating some loops, uh, you're storing them in the right place. So let's go back out to here. And where we want to go is into the files section of our iPad. So we've got a couple of different options that we can choose here. We can go for iCloud Drive um, or we can go to iPad, but I'm going to keep them all on the iPad uh, for the meantime. Um, you can upload them to iCloud Drive if you want, just so you can turn that on. That might already be active within your iPad. That's totally fine. Upload them there. Just means if you're moving between maybe your uh, an iPad and an iPhone, you'll be able to get access to the same uh, samples on either device um, but you do only have a limited amount of space uh, storage within your iCloud I think it's five gig before you have to start paying for it and um, so I'm in this case just going to store them on my iPad but it's going to be up to you so in here uh, I'm going to scroll down so I can see this um, uh, list of options across the top here uh, and I'm going to create a new folder and I'm going to call that folder music samples. So this means that whenever I create any sounds within any app um, or most of the apps that we're going to use, um, those apps will give you the option to export those sounds or to send those sounds somewhere. You can upload them online, you can send them to a friend, you can airdrop them to someone else that has an iOS device. Um, but uh, a lot of them will allow you to send them to files. So whenever we create some beats or sounds or synths in any um, app that we're going to use, if we have that option to export, and uh, all the ones that I'm going to show you do have that option, we will store them in here in this music samples folder. So that just means whenever we're looking for them, they're all going to be stored in the same place. Now, we're in the music samples folder here. You can create subfolders in here if you want. So if I wanted to create one called Beats, you know, that's totally fine. You've now I can store my beats in there. You could divide that up into whatever way you want. You could create it one based on the name of the app. Uh, it could be based on the 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 tempo or the speed or the key that they're in. Uh, it's completely up to you. Different people use different systems. Whatever way you want to work it, I'm sure it will be sweet. Um, okay, now we've created our little folder throughout the rest of the six weeks of this program then this is where we're going to store them in our music samples so that whenever we start to look for those sounds start to piece them together into a track they'll all be saved in the one place uh, okay so that's our music samples we are now going to progress on to looking at our first app and the first app that we're going to use is this one it's called launchpad so 
the basic version, free basic version of Launchpad is free, um, and there are additional add-ons that you can buy. I'll talk you through those in a second. But you can download this for your iPad from the App Store. It's called Launchpad, and the basic version is free. So let's load that up. Um, <clears throat> and basically, what we've got here um, is a a grid, and each one of these squares within the grid has a sample in it. So for example, on the left hand side here, where all the green samples are, these are going to be my drum beats. So if I click on one, it'll then start playing. And if I click on it again, it'll then stop, but it'll wait till the end of the beat. So let me show you. So it waits until it gets to the end of the bar before it actually stops. It doesn't just stop. <clears throat> it doesn't just stop instantly. So uh, if I want to then change it to this beat, it will only let me play one loop within uh, each one of the columns. So if I want to play this one and then I want to change it to this one, have a look at what happens. So you can see that it waits until it gets to the end of the loop uh, and then it will automatically play the next one so it won't just automatically start playing it in the same way that it won't automatically stop playing it if you just click on it. So what I can do now is then start to add up any of these. So as I said you can only have one in uh, each one of your columns but you can have as many in a row that you want. But you can also have a combination of different rows. So say for example if I click on um, let's go for this one here. So, so you can add up those samples in whatever way you want, in whatever order that you want, and any combination that you want uh, from anything uh, along your rows. So you're just going through the different sounds that are there, trying to put together a combination of different things that you like, including beats, and then the second row is usually percussion. These blue ones are usually the bass lines, and then all these pink ones will be kind of your synthesizers or your uh, strings or samples or things like that. So the only ones we haven't had a look at yet are these ones here uh, on the right-hand side. So these ones, when they have a circle, they will just play round and round until you tell them to stop, like so. These ones, whenever you click on it, it plays it once, it gets to the end, and then it stops. So they're slightly different than these ones. These ones will keep going. These ones will just play once until it gets to the end, and then it stops. Um, so you can choose any kind of combination of sounds that you want. Um, you can also choose different uh, sample packs. So at the moment, this is just the sample pack that's currently loaded up. If I go up into the top left-hand corner here and click on this, then uh, we've got a section here called Projects. So if I click on Projects, then there are, you can see the one highlighted there in orange is the one that I'm currently using. Um, but there's lots of different um, uh, sample packs here. I think these first lot here are the ones that kind of come with the 
the, the free version. So whenever you download the free version, you get uh, you know, maybe six or seven of those sample packs that will come with the, uh, the iPad that won't cost you anything else. A lot of these ones up here, these additional ones, right up to the top there, are all extra ones that I have purchased. Um, so to load one of these, you can just click on any of them and it will load up that particular set of sounds. So say I wanted to go for a trance one, I can click on Tough Trance and then it'll reload um, and give me all the Tough Trance samples. Like so. Um, if you want to go and look for some extra packs, you can go into um, the shop by clicking on the little basket there, and you will see that there are uh, a number of different sound packs. You know, so if you want to go and get uh, a sound pack, you can click on it. It will take you into that sound pack, uh, and then you can click on here and have a little preview of what that sounds like uh, and then you can purchase it if you want they're not that expensive only a couple of quid for each one of the little sound packs and then you'll have that sound pack available on your iPad but for the purposes of this we're just going to use this sound pack that we've got here so um, what I'm going to do now is then just show you a couple of different sections so we can have uh, our sections within the app these ones down here so we can have any kind of combination of sounds that we want uh, and we can kind of build those up and uh, have those playing in whichever order we want them to play but we're not just going to have all these samples playing so say I want to queue up all these samples at the same time I can swipe my finger from left to right across these samples just from there like this and it will cue them all at the same time. And then swipe again to turn them all off. So I don't want all these samples playing at the same time throughout the track. I want to build this up into some kind of arrangement uh, and then that will allow us to record it. And we can do that using some of these sections down the bottom here. So I can uh, build build this track up, bring in these sounds in the order that I want them to come in, but also use some of these sections here to create some different types of sounds within those loops. I'll show you what I mean. So if I click on this kick, I'm gonna open up this filter section here. Uh, and then I'm gonna show you how this works. So I've got my little hi-hat one playing there. If I click this filter, you can hear that filtering out. So let's just stop this kick so you can really clearly hear that sound. So if I pull this up, So that's a really cool way to kind of introduce something. So say I wanted to bring in that top and playing this kick, I wanted to bring this in, but I don't want to just bring it in by just pressing play. I could bring my filter all the way down, click on the kick, and then bring this one in and gradually drag this up. Same with this bass. I could pull the filter up for this one, drop in my bass, So, so filters can be really cool, really great way of adding effects and kind of bringing things in and out. Um, but I'm also going to show you this little section down here, uh, which is our effects. And that allows you to add effects to um, the sound. So again, I'm going to bring in this kick and this hi-hat. And these different effects um, will affect the overall master sound. So the sound of all the things combined, they don't work uh, under each one of the columns. So for example, these, these two effects aren't just um, for this particular column of sounds. 
they will affect everything. So these ones that are the circles are repeaters. So whenever I click on it, it will repeat the sound. Like so. These ones down here are filters. That will just filter things in and out over time. And then this one is a, a stopper. Like you're putting the pressing the stop button on a turntable or something like that. Then this one is a gradual filter. And then whenever we let go of this, it'll take then a certain amount of time for that to filter back up. Uh, these ones are little gate effects that will kind of chop them up. And this one is a little uh, flange effect. And these ones are delays. Uh, and you can use a combination of these. Uh, you can hold down a couple at any one time and make any kind of combination of sounds that you want. like so, uh, and then build it up in whatever way you like. <clears throat> okay, the last thing I'm gonna show you here is then how to record this. So up at the top here, we have this little button here, just a little white button uh, with a white circle around it. And if we click if we click that, it, you can see that it inverts the circle. That now means it's ready to record. So as soon as we press any of our buttons here or to launch any of our samples, this will turn red and that means anything that we do will start recording. So let's have a quick record and I'll show you how that works. There we go. So <clears throat> I finished that recording just by hitting the stop button in the top right there. Uh, so now I'm just going to quickly reset this filter. Um, now what we can do, now we've recorded, is go up to top left hand corner. There's our recordings and there is the most recent recording that I've made. So we can click on that. We can press play 
Um, it'll just take a wee second to convert the file so it's in an audio format. Um, but we can click it and then have a listen through. Like so. So <clears throat> what we can do then is share this. So now we've made a little bit of a recording. We can share this, but a really useful bit of information to put into this name. So we can click here uh, and get rid of the name if we want. Um, but before we do that, let's um, go back out here and have a look at a couple of bits of information. So really useful things to be able to know if you're going to put this into your folder that you made earlier on. Uh, and then you're going to maybe put this into another app and add some other samples to it. Really useful things to know is what speed is this sample working at. So we can go in here to find that out and we can go in here to find out the key that it's working at. So currently this tune is E flat minor and the tempo is 136 BPM. So whenever we go to that recording, and we're going to send this recording to this to the folder that we created earlier on. We're going to call that, let's call it Duff Trance, and then we'll call it E E flat. And then let's put in the tempo 136. So whenever we go and look change that um, whenever we go and look then at that sample if we're going to use that as part of another um, track we know what key it's in and we know what speed it's in and that'll become really important later on in this course when we kind of work through this so last thing I'm going to show you then is to put this into that folder that we created and we did that we do that with this section down here so whenever we click on this it allows us to save video audio to send it directly to YouTube or send it directly to SoundCloud. We'll come back and look at those options in a later video, but at the moment we're just going to click on audio and then we're going to choose where that's going to go. So this will open up this window here and we can send it directly into another app if we just scroll along the top here. This allows us to choose apps to send it to um, or we can click save to files. So here's the one that we want uh, to go and select the, the folder that we made earlier. So we go my iPad and then scroll down, find the folder that we created earlier. There's music samples and then we can click save and that will save that as that sample. So if we go back into where our music samples is, then there it is. There's our track now stored in the music sample. So we can then use that same process. We don't want to, we don't need to record a full track every time, but say we go up to here, go to our projects, um, and let's select a slightly different one. So let's go to Midnight House. We could record a beat and then just put that in. So say I wanted this. Okay, so that's the two that I want. I'm going to put a bit of a filter on it. I've just changed the volume on that percussion down a wee bit because I thought it was quite loud. But I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to hit record and then I'm going to launch these two apps at the same time. There we go. So now whenever I go to recordings, um, actually before we go to recordings, we're just going to check the tempo, 118, and we're going to check the key is A minor. So we're going to go to our recordings. There it is there. Let's call that filter beat A minor. Eight. 
There we go. And then we send that audio, save the files, and we scroll down, and let's put that in the Beats folder this time. And click Save. Now, whenever we go back to where our folder is, we've got our trans track there. We go into Beats, and there's our A flat minor beat that we've just created. Like so. So that's how to use your uh, music samples folder uh, using your files uh, on the iPad, creating yourself a little folder to store all your samples, and then a quick look at one of the apps that we're using here, uh, which is a launch pad. Um, how to launch those sounds, record those sounds, and then get the sounds that you've recorded, naming them correctly, and getting those over into that music samples folder that you've created. So <clears throat> between now and next week, if you haven't got this Launchpad app, go and get it. Download it from the App Store. It's free. You get a whole stack of sounds with it uh, to begin with. Uh, that's not going to cost you a penny. Get practicing. Make some beats. Go into your files. Get a folder in there for all your samples. Start recording some stuff and start getting some bits and pieces into that folder. Because from next week onwards, we're then going to start looking at some more apps that will allow us to create some more samples and then we'll start to kind of piece it all together with our samples. So the more that you've got, the more sounds that you've got in that files folder, the more awesome your track's gonna be, the more choices you're gonna have for different sounds that you can put in there. Uh, all right, uh, thanks very much for watching. I will see you next week, bye.